the binomial theorem. So what is it? Well, by two, like a bicycle has two tires, it's a theorem for how you handle two things to a big power. That's basically what it is. So right here they're giving us, um, what are they giving us? X plus three to the fourth power. X plus three to the fourth power. So that's two things. That's an X and a plus three. And it's to the fourth power. Now, we could do that one by hand, right? It's a little, fourth power is a little bit of work, but we could do it. But what if they made that like 12th power? Well, that would be crazy amount of work. I don't know if you know, but that would be nuts. It would be very, very hard for any of us to actually do it all in under an hour and get it all right. Whereas the binomial theorem, which is what we're learning today, is a way to just crank out the answer straight to the final answer without multiplying all along the way. That's what this theorem is. It's the binomial theorem. It's a way to jump right to the final answer when you have two things in a parenthesis to some big power. How do you jump right to the answer? And it's needed because there's all kinds of things as you move up the line in math where you have two things in a parenthesis to a big old power and you don't want to do it all by hand. You need the answer straight away and the binomial theorem does that for you. So first off, how about we just do it the old-fashioned way first off? And just do it by hand. I'm not going to do this when the power gets bigger. But I just want you to see it's going to be this. I'm going to do it by hand. And then I want to do it by formula, binomial theorem. And show you that they come out the same. So how would we do x plus 3 to the fourth power by hand? Well, that means four of them, right? x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. Four of them. And so we'd have to multiply these two and these two. You can do it any order you want. You know, I'll just say, like, multiply the first two. I'm going to skip some steps. You guys know, right, it would just become x squared plus 6x plus 9. You foiled those first two. And then if you foil the back two, it's also going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. That makes sense. First two, last two. And now I have to multiply x squared plus 6x plus 9 times x squared plus 6x plus 9, right? Even just the fourth power is a fair bit of work. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to go to all three. It's going to be nine multiplications now, isn't it? X squared to all three, 6X to all three, and 9 to all three. Nine multiplications. Here we go. Add powers. X to the fourth plus 6X cubed plus 9X squared. Now, next, I'm going to grab the 6X, and he's going to go to all three. And I'm going to line them up vertically as I go. So 6x times x squared, 6x cubed. Put it under the other x cubed. 6x times 6x, 36x squared. And then 6x times 9, 54x. So I'm keeping things lined up. x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, regular x. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I'm going to take the 9. He's going to go to all three. 9x squared. 54x, 9 times 9, 81, gets its own column. There we go. Now, add them all up. So, x to the 4th. 6x cubed and 6x cubed is 12x cubed. This column is something big, I don't know. 9 and 9 is 18 and 36. You want to 18 and 36? I, I would add 20 and back up too. 20, and 9 is 18 and 36. 20 and 36 would be 56, back up to 54, right? 54x squared, because 18 is 2 below 20. 54 and 54, well, 50, 50 is 108, right? 108x and 81. There we go. Which answer is that one? D. D. D it is. So we got the answer. That was just the old-fashioned way, doing it all by hand, which is okay for fourth power. But I wouldn't want to do it if it was much bigger than fourth. It was like seventh or eighth or tenth power. It would be horrible to do it by hand. Let's use the binomial theorem now. Let me show you how to do the binomial theorem. And we'll get the same answer. It'll, the binomial theorem will jump right to this final terms. Right straight to the answer when you use the binomial theorem. So let's redo it with the binomial theorem. How's the binomial theorem work? Well, what you do, you got, you got the two different things. We've got the x and the plus 3, right, to the fourth power. 
So you grab the first item, which is the X, from whoever comes first in the parenthesis, and you put that in parentheses, and you raise it first off to the fourth, whatever power you have here, you start with four, and then you go three, two, one, and even down to zero. Start there. So, so whatever comes first, that'd be even if I had, you know, what if I had an A plus B to the fourth, then I would put A first, A4, A3, A2, A1, A0. So whatever comes first in the parentheses, you just put it to the fourth, third, second, first, zero power, because four is the power on the parentheses. And then right next to it, you're going to put what comes second. What comes second, well, that's the plus three. And you do need the sign. If that was a minus three, then I would put minus three in the parentheses. And I'm going to raise it. I'm starting it on the bottom, though, not the top. And same thing, four, three, two, one, zero. Starting at the bottom, though. So four, third power, second power, first power, zero power. Make sense? So four, three, two, one, zero, four, three, two, one, zero. Start the first one on the top, start the second one on the bottom. Or you could just start in the top for the second one to start with zero, if you want. Just add up, if that's easier. Whichever way you want to see the pattern. Notice another way to see the pattern is the two powers that are side by side always add up to the total power. One and three make four, two and two make four, zero and four make four. See how the powers side by side always end up making the total? That pattern will always be there in the binomial theorem. One more piece of the puzzle, but it's the most complex. The last thing is you're going to put in the front of each of these terms. These, these are, I'm just doing it vertical. The, you, know, you could write it sideways. I just think it's cleaner to do it vertical. These will be the five terms. These will, be, these will end up being these five terms which are listed sideways there. I'm just listing them vertical. Okay, now what do you put in the front of each of these? You're going to put this thing called combinations or choose. I don't know if you've ever seen that. So you start with the top number again, the four, whatever your power is, and you go zero. And those are just floating vertically. They're not really a fraction. They kind of look like a fraction without the bar. They're vertically floating in parentheses. It's a math notation. I'll explain what it is in a minute. They're each going to become a number with a formula. I'll show you how. Then it's 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, and 4, 4. So you start off with whatever your power is, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, those, we're not done with those. Those need to become numbers. How do they become numbers? Well, I'm going to show you three different methods to figure out what those are. Using your calculator, a by-hand method, and then Pascal's triangle. Three different ways to figure those out and do whatever you feel like, whatever you like best. So, all right, so how do we do, like, four, it's called four choose zero. Four combinations of zero. Well, you're going to use the NCR button on your calculator. You know the NCR button? If you, get out, if you have a calculator, find the NCR thing, and I'll write out what we're going to do, and then we'll actually do it. So where it's found, at least on the TI, TI 84, 83, the TIs, it's found under the math button. If you hit the math button, and then you go to the right a couple of times and go over to the PRB screen, there's a probability screen. So I can um, show you that. Where am I at? Oh, that's not what I want. That's what I want. Okay, yeah, so hit the math button and go over to the PRB screen. So hit the math button over here on the left, third, third from the top on the left, hit the math button, and see at the top how they have different menus? Go over three times to the PRB, which means probability menu, and go down, one, two, three, see I'm on the probability menu, and see NCR right there, number three? NCR, so go down to, well actually, you know what, I should have put the number on the screen first. Never mind, we'll do that in a second. First, first put the number, the four, so what you do is, yeah, you first put the 4 on your screen. So let me go back to the main screen. Put a 4, and then go do all that stuff I just did. Hit math, go over to the PRB, go down to the NCR. Everybody tracking with me? Go down to NCR, hit enter, and then it'll put NCR in the main screen. So it's 4, 
NCR, and then put the second number zero. So that's four NCR zero, and hit enter. It'll tell you the answer is one. So the first one is just a one. Four NCR zero is one. Let's go back to what we're talking about. So that means this first one here is one. That's going to become a one. Let's do the next one. What's four NCR one? Four. It's going to come out four. The next one is six, isn't it? Yeah. And then back to four, back to one. Mm -hmm. See if you can get those values. One, four, six, four, one. That's what those come out to be. It's combinations. If you ever studied probability, it's four combinations of zero, four combinations of one, four combinations of two. It means it's a probabilistic calculation. It means like four, four choose two means it, out of four objects, how many ways are there to choose two? So anyway, we're not teaching probability, but that's, that's what it means. If you have four, if, you, if, I, if I have, see, now I want to teach it. If I have four objects, if I have like four letters, yeah, I'm going to pick two. Right, I'm going to pick um, B and D. All right, I picked two. But I didn't have to pick B, D. I could have picked A, B, or I could have picked A, C, or I could have picked A, D, or I, you know, on and on. Well, in fact, how many different things could I have picked? A, B, A, C, A, D, or B, C, or B, D. We're starting with A, A, B, A, C, A, D, starting with B, B, C, B, D, or starting with C, C, D. Those are all the different groups of two I could have picked, huh? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what the six means. Out of four objects, if you're going to pick two, there's six different groups of two objects out of four. That's what, that's what that is. Anyway, it comes from the world of probability. Anyway, you don't need to know that. That was all an added bonus, no charge for that extra information today. All right, so um, that's what this thing is we're calculating, but it turns out to be useful in the binomial theorem and actually many other places. So everybody able to, on your calculator to get those values for, you know, NCR, 4 NCR 0, 4 NCR 1, 4 NCR 2. And by the way, once you get, start to repeat, you know the rest. It, it's always symmetric. It'll always repeat. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, like that. So once you get past halfway, you know the rest. It always repeats like that. Goes up and goes down every time. Now, that's one way. You can use your calculator with the NCR. Another way, let me show you another way. So, let me, let me just do like a 4 choose 2. So, 4 choose 2 again is 4 NCR2 on your calculator. Or, so that's method number 1. Method number 2 is by hand. By hand, if you want to do 4 choose 2, this will come out 6, 4 choose 2, the first number is your starting number. If you want to do it by hand, and the second number is how many numbers, and divide by this number down to 1. What does all that mean? That means start at 4, right? This is the starting number. This is how you would do it by hand. Start at 4, do two numbers, right? How many numbers? So start at four, do two numbers. What do I mean do two numbers? Do, do what with them? Well, it's multiplied down by one every time. So it's like four, three, two, one kind of thing. So it'll be four, three. That's the top. Start at one, do two numbers. So far, so good. The, and divide by this number down to one. What number? The second number, two, down to one. So there it is, 12 over two, same answer, six. Did you track with that by hand method? So in other words, the top number is what you start with. Start at 4, do two numbers, 4, 3, divided by the second number down to 1. So that's the by hand method. So let me, let me change it up. What if you had like, I don't know, 12 choose 3? What would you do? Well, you start at the top number. So I'd start at 12, do three numbers, 12, 11, 10. Make sense? Start at the top number. Do three numbers, and what do you put on the bottom? Three times two times one. Three all the way down to one. Does that make sense? So the top number is where you start. Start at 12, do three numbers, then divide by the second number down to one. That's the by hand method of NCR. So whatever that comes out to be, whatever. So you can do it by calculator, NCR. You can do it by hand. Start at the top number, do two numbers, divide by the second number down to one. And there's, wait, but wait, there's more, like an infomercial. There is more. There's, if you want, there's a third way, Pascal's Triangle.
Anybody ever heard of this before? Pascal was a Pascal was everything. It's funny how they were back in those days. He was a mathematician, philosopher, like big philosopher, big mathematician, big astronomer, did all kinds of things. It's funny how they did everything back in the day, 1600, 1700, 1500s. I don't even remember. Now we're so specialized. There is more knowledge to be had now. So now we're much more, like I'm the doctor of the left pinky finger only, right? We're so specialized compared to back then. They just did everything. Anyway, Pascal, if you do philosophy, you'll read some of Pascal's stuff. And anyway, da-da-da. Here's his triangle. He said, hey, take a bunch of ones and just, just make a big Christmas tree. Here, I'll do the Christmas tree thing since it's Christmas season here. All right. Put all the ones down, down the rows like that. And then you add between them. So I'll go 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. It's just a simple little adding pyramid of 1s. 1 plus 3 is 4. You always add between to go down. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. Look right here. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Right? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So that's Pascal's observation. So you can get the coefficients. Now you might wonder, well, how do I know which row it is? Because here's a 1, 3, 3, 1. Right. This is for fourth power. This is for third power. This is for second power. 1, 2, 1. Right. You can tell we had a, we had a fourth power. So we would grab fourth. So, so there you go. That's another way. Do whatever you want. So Pascal's triangle or by calculator or by hand. We can get those coefficients, those binomial theorem co. And you can keep going, right? If you want to do another row, you can put the ones on the side and keep on going. All right. So where were we? So getting back. So we've got the one four six four one. Good. We're ready to wrap this up finally now. All right. So now we have the three pieces. There's three pieces. There's the the one, which is is this thing comes comes out to be one times this thing times that thing. So we have one times x to the fourth. And what's 3 to the 0? One, one. 1 also. So this all comes out to be 1x to the fourth. Yep, that's the first term. You might be thinking, is this easier, Mr. Heron? Is this easier? Well, not for fourth power. But for tenth power, absolutely. This is helpful. This is like a big tool. And we're just doing a little job with it right now, right? This big tool is great for big jobs. It'll be very helpful. All right, next comes... This guy, which is 4, right? The 4 choose 1 came out to be 4, times x to the 3rd, times 3 to the 1, which is just 3. So that's 12x cubed. Sure enough, that's the second term. See how we're getting that? Third one, 6. This whole thing, 4 choose 2, is 6, times x squared, times 3 squared, which is 9, right? And then 6 times 9... 54 x squared. There it is. We good? And then 4 times x times 3 cubed. 4 times x. And what's 3 cubed? 27. And what's 4 times 27? I don't know. 108? Yeah. 108x, sure enough. That's the next term. Lastly, 1. 4 choose 4 is 1. 1. And what's x to the 0? What's anything to the 0? 1. And 3 to the 4th? You should calculate 81. 1 times 1 times 81. 81. Sure enough. There it is. There's the terms. We cranked them all out. We good there? Questions I can answer on that one? It's good. We'll do a bunch more of these. Is that okay so far? No questions? All right. Okay, so there we go. 4x plus 1 to the fifth power. 
All right, give it a try. Let me get, let you get started. So you remember, you start with the first one. Let's do it right here. So you start, start with the 4x to the 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st, 0. Make sense for the first step? You just binomial theorem, two terms, like a bicycle, two tires, binomial, two terms. Start with the first player in the game, the 4x. Go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So then you take the second number, the 1, right, the positive 1. You start on the bottom, 5th power, 4th power, 3rd power, 2nd power, 1st power, 0 power. Isn't that good? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then you put in the front of that the choose thing. And you start with 5, right? 5, choose 0. Because 5 is the power. You're always starting with the power, which is 5. 5, choose 0. 5, choose 1. 5, choose 2. 5, choose 3. 5, choose 4. 5, choose 5. Now you can use your calculator or by hand or Pascal's triangle to find out what those coefficients are. Second on that. Okay, so 5, choose 0 should be 1, and this should be 5, and what is it, 10? And then 10 again, 5, 1. Did you get those coefficients? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Is that okay? Now, put it all together, find out what the coefficients are using the binomial theorem. Am I going too fast? It's okay, so multiply those all together. So it's going to be 1. And then 4x to the 5th, I don't know what that is, 4 to the 5th, that's 1024, huh? x to the 5th, and 1 to the 0 is just 1, so that equals, I'm running out of room here, huh? 1024x to the 5th. Good with the first term? 
So use your calculator, 4 to the 5th power there. Thought I left enough room, but it doesn't look like it. So the next one is five. Four to the fourth is something big. Three, two, three, four, two fifty-six. And I don't know what that is. Five times two fifty-six. Twelve eighty. Next to the fourth. Is that okay? It's okay. Questions I can answer. It's making sense. And then the next one, feel free to speak up. This isn't making any sense. 64x cubed 1 squared is 1. So it's at 640x to the third for the third term. Good so far. Next one, 10, so that's 16x squared times 1, 160x squared. Not okay. And then 5 times 4x times 1, 20x. And last one, 1. And 4x to the 0, that's all just 1, isn't it? It's all just 1. There we go. So whichever answer that is, there's, there's the term. Questions I can answer on that? So I did for the test, whenever the test, when is the test? I'd write, just write the, I'd probably write an example of one of these on the 3x5 card. And this is probably worth putting like one whole problem on the 3 x mainly just seeing the pattern I think that'll help you to have one of them on your 3x5 card so you can just, you know, follow the yellow brick road, follow the pattern there. Probably would be helpful, I would think. That's what I would want, so I work. The exam, um, yeah. You know what? I pushed, they pushed the exam. I already said that. I pushed the exam off a little bit. So I didn't want to have it the week after Thanksgiving. I thought that would be hard. So it's going to be the 5th. Did I already say that or not? I can't remember. Exam number 4 will be December 5th. So I'm pushing it off one meeting, December, which is a Tuesday. So it's not, it's not the week after Thanksgiving, but the, it's not what, next week, in other words. It's the week after. So it's two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. This is exam four. All right, so questions on that one? We good? I'm going to go on another one. It's kind of the same every time. So I'm willing to go real slow on a couple, and then the rest I'll go quicker. They're pretty much the same. It's that pattern every time. Just, just get that pattern. I'm going to put it on a fresh screen so we have room. So number 5, root x plus root 5 to the 6. Root x plus root 5 to the 6. Okay. So, so let's try that one. So go ahead and, you know, give it a try there. It's binomial again, two terms. So start with the first one. Is that going okay? Feel free to check with each other. You know, get as much as you can out of this. Okay, so let me jump in with you. So a binomial theorem. So we start with the first one, the um, root x to the sixth, and the root x to the fifth, and the root x to the fourth, and the root x to the third, and the root x to the second, and the root x to the first, and the root x to the zero. Is that good? Six five four three two one zero. Let's show. And then we do the second one. 
And the second one is the root 5, and you, and you go root 5, and it starts with 0, huh? And you just go up the line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that good? Like that. And then we got to put the coefficients in the front. And the coefficients. That'll, you start with whatever your power, so it's 6 in this case, 6, 0, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, choose 3, 6, choose 4, 6, choose 5, 6, choose 6. And then you use your calculator or by hand or by Pascal's triangle to figure out what those coefficients are. What is 6, choose 0? It's 1. 6, choose 1 is 6. 6 choose 2, yeah, I don't know, 30 divided by 2, is it 15? And 6 choose 3 is 20? Yeah, 20. Bless you. And then, then it repeats, huh? Once it starts repeating, wait, am I all messed up? Oh, yeah, I am. That's not 20 again, it's 15, huh? There I am messing up. Yeah, sometimes there's 2 in the middle. Sometimes there's one in the middle. Uh, if there's an even amount or odd amount, anyway, you know, you can just use your calculator and, or, or by hand or by Pascal's. You getting those coefficients? Are we good to there? Is that working out? Am I racing ahead of you? Is that okay with that pattern? Is that pattern making sense? Math is just patterns. It just really is. Everything in math is just, just patterns. Is that pattern making sense, how that works, the binomial theorem pattern? All right, and now let's just multiply those all out. Yeah, that's the tricky part, huh? All right, so here we go. So, so this is 1 times root x to the 6th. Now, what is root x to the 6th power? Let's go over here. So root x to the 6th. Well, that means root x, root x, root x, root x, root x, root x, six of them. So what do you do? Remember how the root thing works? Two in, one out, right? Whatever you have, two whatever's in, it sends one out. That's why it's called a square root. Remember, square means two. This is called cube, right, third power. So whenever we call the thing a square root, we're saying two. Square root means two root. And that's what these are. It means they're like a two-for-one deal at Target. Right? It's Christmas time. Shopping at Target. Two for one deal. That's what square roots do. So two X's in, send one X out, outside the root. Two X's in, send one more X outside. These are all multiplied together because uh, that's what six power means. Six multiplied together. Two X's in, another X out. So that comes out X cubed in the end, doesn't it? Is that good? And then when we do the root X to the fifth in a minute, let's just do them all right now. It'll be five root x's, so again, two in, one out, two in, one out, and the last one just has to stay in, so that'll be x squared root x for x to the fifth. Get the idea? So every two in, send one out. That's, that's the idea with roots. That's what roots always do. Two for one deal at target. Two in, one out. I'm tying this lecture to the theme of the season here. There's something hard about this season in my home because we've got too many females in my home, my wife and three daughters, and me and my two sons end up submitting to their desires with the TV, and so they want to watch Hallmark movies all the time at the start of the Christmas season. Those movies are so stinking predictable. I mean, in 10 minutes, you could, oh yeah, he's going to marry her, and she's going to lose the job, but he's going to rehire, you know, you just, here, here we go. Me and my sons are like, really? I mean, is this entertaining? But all the females in the house are excited about such movies. All right, so there's my only struggle with the holiday season. My wife makes great Christmas candy. That's my up for it. All right, so x squared, square root of x. So, and then the rest is the same, right? The rest of the square roots, is that okay? And then the, um, so let's go back. Let's put those in there. So square root of x to the sixth, that's x to the third. Square root of five to the, anything to the zero power. It's just a 1, so that's just x cubed there, like that. Good. Next one, so it's going to be 6. And then square root of x to the 5th, we just talked about that. That's x squared root x. And then square root of 5 to the 1, that's just square root of 5. 
So then how do you do that? Well, I would put these two guys together, 6x squared, that's a squared there, and then the, you can put the two root guys together under a single root. Is that good? Remember all those root things from your algebra days, right? The, I, I tell my algebra students, inside stuff multiplies inside stuff. The insiders go together in the root, right? I think you know that. Next one would be 15. And then what is root x to the fourth power going to be? Yeah, exactly. Come back over here. Root x to the fourth, that'll be four of them. Two sends one out, two sends one out, so it's x squared, isn't it? So it's going to be x squared. And then what's root of five squared? Let's go do that. What's uh, root of five squared? That's root five, root five, so what's that? Plain five, because two fives in, one si five out, right? Two for one deal. Two for one deal. That's always what root, square roots do. Two in, one out. So it's just five. So this will be just five. What is that, 75 x squared when you multiply five times 15, like that? Next one, 20 times root x to the third. What's root x to the third going to be? x square root x. x root x. Everybody okay with that? Okay, and then what's root 5 to the third? 5 root 5. Is that okay that I just write that like that? Because that's 3 root 5. You want me to come back over here and do a little bit more? So if I have 3 root 5s, remember 2 in, 1 out. So there'll be 1 5 out, and the other root 5 just stays in. Same thing with the root x's, right? Root x to the third. 2 x's in, 1 out. So this guy's here, and this guy's here. So x root x is what that equals. Good? So, so now what does that mean? Well, the outside, so I tell my algebra students, outsiders multiply outsiders, insiders multiply insiders. So 20x, those are all outsiders, times 5, he's an outsider, so 20x times 5, 100x, those are the outsiders, and then the insiders, 5 and x, go together inside. 100x, root of 5x. Next one, 15, root x squared, that's plain x. What's root 5 to the 4th? Let's go look at that one. So root 5 to the 4th, it's root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5, two, 2 root 5's make a regular 5, 2 root 5's make a regular 5, 25, huh? So 25, multiply together, 15 times 25, I have no idea. 375. 375x. Good. Two more to go. Six. Root x to the ones, just root x. Root 5 to the fifth. Let's go look at that. Root 5 to the fifth is root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5. These two root 5s make a plain 5. These two root 5s make a plain 5. So we got 5 times 5 times root 5 which is 25 root 5. Good? 25 root 5. So this is 25 root 5. Oops. So what do we got here? Outsiders times outsiders. 6 times 25. It's at 150. And what goes inside? X and 5. Root 5x. There we go. 150 root 5x. One more. One. Root x to the zero is just one. Anything to the zero power is one. Root 5 to the sixth. That's a big one. So root 5 to the sixth. Root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5, root 5. These two make a 5, these two make a 5, these two make a 5. 5 times 5 times 5, 125. Oops, did I go too far? So this would be 125. Bless you. So that's 125. There we go. We got all the terms. Is that okay? You good with the binomial theorem? Questions on the pattern? All good?
Okay, so now, rather than list the whole thing, they're saying, all right, here, take 2x minus 1 to the 10th. We certainly don't want to do that by hand. It would be a terrible, terrible pain. Um, and jump and find the x to the fourth term. All they want is the coefficient, which means the number next to, right, the copilot, the number next to, the coefficient of x to the fourth. So we don't have to do the whole thing. We just have to do enough of the pattern until we can tell what's going to be next to x to the fourth. That's all they want. And the answer is right there, 3360. Let's see how, how we got to that. So can you do that? Let me let you start. You know how to do it, right? First term, binomial, two terms, first term, second term. Give that a try. All right, how y'all doing? So... So grab the first one, this is the 2x, start with the 10th power, 9th power, 8th power, 7th power, 6th power, 5th power, 4th. Now that's the one I need, is the 4th power one, huh? Because they want to know, you know, that's the one that's going to produce an x to the 4th term, right? Which is what they want. So that, I don't need to go any further. That's the one I need right there. Now, can you tell what is going to be next to it? I mean, it's going to be the negative. Be careful, it is negative 1, right? The second term. These are all negative 1. What, uh, what power? Negative 1 to what power? Well, start, yeah, a couple ways. What did you, sorry, do you want to say something? want to say something? Six, yeah, you can tell, huh? How do you know? Good, Samuel. The total's got to be 10. Remember, so if this is 4, this has got to be 6, because remember, the side-by-side -side powers always add up to be the total power. 10, you can do it that way, or you can just start with 0 at the top. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sure enough, you're right at 6. Good, either way. Either way is totally fine. And now, what are the, uh, what's this stuff in the front? Well, you can do them all, or you could just follow some kind of pattern. It's going to be 10, 0, 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6. So it's 10, 6 there. So, putting it all together, we've got... 10 choose 6, 2x to the 4th, negative 1 to the 6th. That's going to be the x to the 4th term. Let's just figure out what that is now. Making sense? So, how do we get that? Well, 10, you, you can use your calculator, 10 choose 6. Somebody want to tell me what it is? I have no idea. 210, thank you. So this becomes 210. This is 2 to the 4th, which is 16 x to the fourth, right? And this is just positive one because it's a negative power to an negative one to an even power. So that's two ten times sixteen, which is some well, that's probably the thirty three sixty. X to the fourth. There we go. That's how I got the thirty three sixty as the coefficient, the number in front of the x to the fourth term. Does that make sense? Questions I can answer on that? That's kind of powerful if you think about it, right? Just that we could do that. I mean, you know, if, if, if we didn't know this formula, pattern, binomial theorem thing, if somebody just gave us that and said, I want to know the whatever's next to x to the fourth, we'd have to do the whole thing by hand. That'd be a huge pain. It'd take like an hour and probably we'd all mess up, me included, right? It's so too many terms. You mess something up. To actually be able to jump right to the x to the fourth term and that quick and just pull out 3360, that's because of the power of a pattern, right? That's math. I don't know if you ever wonder or want to see how math... I, I just always feel a burden to make sure people understand. What is math and how does it fit in the real world? Math is patterns. In the end, math is made up, as I've said many times, patterns to describe things that are real. So math simply does this by saying, look at the pattern. It just goes up by one and this goes down by one and this, you know, just it observes patterns. And there's power in pattern observation, isn't there? It allows you to jump right to the middle and come up with an answer quickly. All right. It's basically the same kind of thing. 
but it's a slightly different. Again, they're asking us to jump kind of into the middle. But instead of saying, hey, give me, give me what's the coefficient of x to the fourth or the coefficient of x to the third or whatever, they just say fourth term. I don't have any idea what the x thing is there. See how it's a little different? They're saying just jump into the fourth term and give me the fourth term. So you've got the answer there, but go ahead and see if you can come up with that yourself. So do the pattern and just stop at the fourth term and figure out fourth term. Okay, so, the, so we start with the 2x, 2x to the 8, 2x to the 7, 2x to the 6, 2x to the 5. So there's, right, this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. And then we do the, uh, the second one, which is what, negative 3 to the 0, Negative 3 to the 1, negative 3 to the 2, negative 3 to the 3rd. And then the uh, coefficient thing in the front there, so it's what? 8, 8 choose 0, 8 choose 1, 8 choose 2, 8 choose 3. So there it is, there's the term we're looking for. It's 8 choose 3, 2x to the 5th, Minus 3 to the third. Good so far? That's the fourth term, right? So then, use your calculator. 8 choose 3. Is it 56? What is it? 56, yeah. Okay. And 2 to the fifth would be 32. X to the fifth. And then this is minus 27. And you multiply those all together, I guess it's minus... 48,384 x to the 5th. There's our answer. And we're done. Is that okay? So on the exam... I'll give you one where I ask you for all the terms, like fourth power, fifth power, not too big, you know. Say, so give me all the terms. Then I'll give you one, like this one or the last one, where you have to jump somewhere into the middle. Say, what's the fourth term, or what's the coefficient of x to the fifth, or whatever, one of those. So I'll give you one, there'll be two problems. I'm pretty sure, best I can remember, there'll be two problems from this section. One with everything, one with jumping into the middle. No questions?